Okay, and we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our English chat. It's great to be here. It's great to see you all. Um, I hope you had a great break. If you're coming in from Professor Kiva's lesson, or if you're just joining us today, we are going to be talking about something that everybody can relate to. And as you can see from this little drawing behind me, that is our topic today. We are going to be talking about stress, what stress is, how it affects your life, as well as ways that you can cope or deal with or manage your stress. So also everyone, please stay tuned to the end because we will be having a short quiz to see if you've been paying attention this whole time and there could be a small surprise for you. So please hang on till the very end. Today we're going to do a lot of focus on learning words as well as expressions that you can use in a discussion about stress. Wow, so many people are commenting already. Hello everyone and good afternoon. I have Joseph commenting, wow, you dyed your hair. Yes, <laughs> and uh, I do not want to speak too much about that. However, it does tie into today's lesson because changing our appearance, I think a lot of women can relate to dyeing their hair, for example, is perhaps a way that we can cope with our stress. So yes, I have changed my hair, but it will probably um, look different the next time we speak because it is sure to lighten up as time goes by. All right. Let's move on, shall we? So our first question today is, well, how do we define stress? I would love to hear from you first. So please, in our chat room, would you give me your definition of stress? What is stress? Let's wait and see. I'll give you some time to come up with your ideas. And I would really like to know if somebody, maybe with a scientific background, could tell us a little about our body's response to stress. We'll do all of this technical stuff before we get into our discussion about the language we can use. Yes, and we're getting off to a great start. I see so many people still coming into our discussion. And to remind our viewers who are just coming in right now, our topic today is stress. Stress can make us feel a little bit like the Incredible Hulk sometimes when it really gets to us. So how can we define stress? What is stress? I have Joseph commenting again. Oh, if I get stressed, I'd like to drink beer. <laughs> we can talk about that later. I think that drinking alcohol is a common reaction or response to being stressed. Somebody says my husband. Oh, you're so bad. Anybody else? How can we define stress? Oh, I see the joke now. Yun, Yun Hei Choi. My husband is the definition of stress. Okay, shh, that stays between us. <laughs> bad for healthy by Pony. Pony, thank you so much. That's a really great answer. Stress is certainly bad for health. We actually need to say just the word, the noun, health. Healthy is more of the adjective. For example, I have a healthy body. Of Kishik Park saying, even though there is something I want to get or to be, but I can't. That kind of situation. Yes, that is a great example of stress or a stressful situation where we really want something. We're so frustrated, but we can't get it or achieve it. Studying must do something. Oh, Erin, I like your answer. Stress is a hormone. Choi, excuse me, by the way, if I can't pronounce your name well, um, but I'll do my best. And if I make a mistake with your name, please correct me in the chat room. So Betty says, the moment that we are suffering from the coronavirus, oh, certainly, um, we can see how our topics relate today. I mean, K Professor Kiva talked about the coronavirus, and I'm sure that it was brought up in her discussion about how stressful this current situation is. So everybody, I hope that you're all healthy and that you're coping well with this stressful situation. Very good. So I think we have a lot of great uh, ideas and examples of stress. I just wanted to give you a little bit of the background 
um, we have something, a part of our brain called the hypothalamus. And you can think of that as like the tiny control center in your mind. And it sends directions or orders to your whole body. So the hypothalamus says when you encounter a stressful situation, it says, okay, send out the stress hormones. And then these stress hormones, they flood your body and they're there in a sort of fight or flight reaction. It's a response. It's an ancient response that our bodies have to get us out of stressful or threatening or horrible situations. So exactly, yes, our brain tells our body, let's prepare. So we can feel some symptoms of stress. Perhaps your heart races, your breath quickens, your muscles tense, and they get ready for action. And when our stress hormones are firing, and firing means being activated, um, being used, uh, being triggered, for instance, all of these words, when they are firing or being used, repeatedly, because you're encountering these stressful situations often in your daily life, this over time exposure to stress can certainly lead to some health problems. Um, however, uh, I want to keep our conversation today as light as possible and more focused on the ESL or EFL uh, context, meaning that we'll just learn words about uh, stress and how we can talk about our stress. I don't want to bore you too much with the scientific details or anything too negative and depressing. Let's have a look at the comments for a minute before we move into our next section. I have some great comments to catch up on. Yes, emotional agonies in a negative way by Hyunju Kim. Thank you. I really like that idea. Emotional agonies or um, our sorrows our issues, um, anything that's negative really. But stress, Hyunju Kim says, sometimes plays a positive part in our lives. Oh, that's a really great idea, yes. And I do plan on talking about that later on in our lesson today because people sometimes talk about positive stress and negative stress. So stress can obviously affect us in negative ways and give our bodies a very um, difficult time but also stress can maybe motivate us. A little bit of stress sometimes can actually push us. It can propel us to do something important, such as right before you go um, on stage to deliver a speech or a presentation, the, the butterflies in your stomach, that stressful feeling, it can maybe help you perform even better in certain cases. Well said, I like that idea. I'd like to recommend Eric, sorry, Aaron Griffin, uh, Aaron, Giraffe? Oh, I'm so sorry. I really um, mispronounced, or we could say an expression here, I butchered your name. I did not mean to mispronounce that. I'm so sorry. So I'll just go by your first name. Erin said, I'd like to recommend a book, The Deepest Well, if you guys are interested in stress. Oh, that is awesome. Please do share any resources that you may have that can help people cope with stress. We could even put this all under the umbrella of self-help or therapy or healing. Healing is another, I think it's a popular uh, trend or idea currently in Korea. And we'll be talking about healing, healing cafes, healing pods a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Great comments. I watched a TED Talk, Helen J says, where they talk about stress and how it can be helpful if you receive it positively. That's right, that's right. We were just discussing that. Yes, yeah, stress can sometimes really contribute positively to your life. Gina Park says, when we take the test, moderate stress, stress excuse me, moderate stress could be effective. Oh yes, I believe that some amount of stress can help you perform well. Excellent, okay, we're going to move on. So we talked a little bit about the symptoms of being under a lot of stress. Let me see if there are any that I missed. So I'm going to type that in our chat. The question is, what are some symptoms? Symptoms mean your body's response, how your body reacts to. What are some symptoms of being under or experiencing stress? I'll put that in our chat room. And I'd love to hear your answers before we move on to the vocabulary section. What are some symptoms of being under a lot of stress? You'll notice here that I use the expression under a lot of stress. 
We're going to look at later how there are a lot of ways we can talk about stress, being put into a stressful situation, being under stress, experiencing stress, being stressed out. Um, yes, there are actually so many, and we'll look at that soon. But um, just pay attention to that expression, under a lot of stress. It's like, actually, it's just like saying you're being put under a lot of pressure. And that pre preposition really puts the emphasis on how stress can really push down on us and make us feel like we're being, I don't know, compressed or crushed or something. That could maybe be similar to how we feel. So that's why we use under a lot of stress. And you could even say an expression like, oh, I underwent a lot of stress two years ago when I was in the hospital. That's a way that you can use under stress. Let me look at what you have to say. The physical symptoms of being under stress. T. Jenny says, become hopeless. Yes, that's a, a feeling that we have certainly. I feel a fast heartbeat, says uh, Kishik Park. Thank you. Lovely answer. Helen J says, sleepless or sleep deprived. Oh, certainly, certainly. Yes. Okay, a rapid heartbeat. Oh, everyone is mentioning that, it seems. Pimples. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Pimple, I guess, could mean jump in Korean. Right. So I break out often. That means I get a lot of pimples when I am under stress. I dye my hair and I get pimples. Such is life. I think gray hair is coming up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can also have some gray hairs appear when you are under a lot of stress. Sweaty palms, sweat on our palms, well done. Headache and stomach ache, certainly. Dry mouth and binge eating. Oh, that's a great expression. For those of you who may not know, binge eating is when we, uh, we could say, uh, we, um, what's the proper word I'm looking for? We are not following our diet or we break our diet or we go off our diet and we just decide to eat so much food. It's uncharacteristic of us. We eat so much food in a very short amount of time and binge eating is a definite uh, way that people cope with their stress, certainly, and I am certainly guilty of that. Okay, eye twitches, yeah, that's right. I had a friend in Canada who would uh, have an eye twitch every time the boss spoke to uh, my friend. So <laughs> it often happened at work. It was a government job and uh, it was a high pressure. Yes, okay. Um, Joyce Wu says, I eat a lot and sleep become fatter, indigestion physically, and having a headache, says T. Jenny. Oh, wow. We're with a really sharp bunch. These are all great. Okay, so we have discussed some symptoms. If you want, you can keep them coming in. I'll catch up with them later, but we will move on. Some symptoms of being under a lot of stress. So what I'd like to do now is actually give you some words or phrases that we can use um, when we are describing our feeling of being stressed out. As I mentioned earlier, we can be stressed out, we can be under stress, but we can't be stressed in. So be careful, don't use that preposition. We can't be stressed in, though we could be in a stressful situation. Um, another way is you could say that you are just simply stressed out. I think that's a very common one that native speakers use or wound up. Actually, I'll refer to my notes now. I'll bring you closer. And uh, as we go closer here, I hope you cannot see my little bit messy apartment. Okay, just a moment, everybody. Stress. We'll talk first about stressed out. And this is a very common phrasal verb. Uh, you could say it in sentences like, everybody around me is so stressed out. Oh, I'm so stressed out out or by or over or with um, the coronavirus. So I'm so stressed out because of the coronavirus. I'm so stressed out by the coronavirus. I'm so stressed out over the coronavirus. Actually, all of those can be said. So don't worry too much, but don't say I'm so stressed in about. That wouldn't really make sense. Um, this person is very stressed out with everything going on in their life. Um, what else could we say? Oh, you should laugh or you'll get stressed out. Um, we also have other constructions of the sentences. If you're referring to yourself and you're changing the order, you could say, 
Um, you're stressing me out. That means I'm the receiver of the stress. Oh, you're stressing me out. Please stop. I'm so worried right now. Don't tell me that. Oh, I'm so stressed out. You are stressing me out. So I will put this one in our chat room. Stressed out. Could somebody please use the expression stressed out, which is probably the most common one to use, as I had mentioned, um, stressed out in a sentence. So your challenge, everybody, please use stressed out. You can stress somebody out. You could become stressed out. Let's see what we have. And while you're typing, I will catch up on some of these comments. Having a shower. I think that, sure, you can shower to kind of restart yourself, um, you know, reset your day in a sense, or you can feel refreshed again and ready to uh, tackle whatever you need to do. T. Jenny says, many people are stressed out by the coronavirus. Perfect. Yes. Excellent sentence. Thank you. I am stressed out, says Joyce Wu, because my boss pushes me and things are too much. Lovely sentence. Wow, I like that. Even the expression too much, it means it's too much to handle. There's too much going on. I like that sentence. Well done. Helen J says, I'm stressed out because of my annoying brother. <laughs> yes, I suppose family. Uh, they can be a source of stress, you know, in, in annoying ways, in small ways, in big ways, let's say, certainly. Um, I'm stressed out because a girl I was seeing left me. Oh, Oh, that's hard. I am so sorry. I don't have much to say in terms of condolences because uh, uh, I don't know what to say. I've never been in that situation, but just fighting, cheer up. Uh, uh, sorry, I used a little bit of Konglish there. Fighting should be actually just, um, you know, good luck, best of luck. I, I hope you do well. Uh, I'm rooting for you. Cheer up. Uh huh. So relationships can cause stress. That's the, the point. Here, so we'll move on. Um, I get stressed out when I see my account. Jump, jump, jump. So ellipses, dot, 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 and balance. <laughs> I think we all can experience that, especially now with the coronavirus because of, let's just say that um, there's some financial uncertainty right now, uh, especially with the stock markets or the global markets, etc. So yes, finances are a cause for stress. Apple says, hello. Hello. Welcome back, Apple. Uh, Yunhe. Choi says, my son's stressed out because he cannot meet his friend. Perfect. Perfect expression. That's a great sentence. All of the sentences, by the way, have been perfect thus far. Thank you. Um, Betty says, I'm stressed out when I have to decide something all by myself. Yes. Yes. I also have some, we can call that like decision anxiety, maybe like stress about making a decision. Well done. I am stressed out because of studying English says Apple. Uh, we'll talk about that later because as far as I know uh, from what my students in Korea have told me that English education can cause stress for many English learners. So unfortunately, yes, studying English um, for whatever purposes, to take a test, to become employed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also just because of uh, I could say the mechanics of the English language, there are just so many exceptions and rules that can be broken and idioms that can be confusing. And oh, there's just so much that can cause stress to learners. But what I always tell students who are feeling um, anxiety over learning English, I tell them uh, just to, it sounds cliche, but let it go because native speakers such as myself, other professors, uh, native speakers across the world, or um, yeah, the primary English speakers, we make mistakes often, so always keep that in mind. It's just human nature to make a mistake, whether you're speaking or writing. So please, if you ever make a mistake with your English, let it roll off your shoulder. That means just brush it off, don't think about it, because as long as you can communicate and get your idea across, you're doing well. And you're very smart for knowing more than one language. So 